Hello, in this video, we'll go over how to design and draw maxillary class 4 RPDs. Before we start, it's important to have a plan. Generally speaking, long span class 4s will have a fulcrum line on their anterior and most abutment teeth, which means we'll need indirect retainers here and we'll need stress breaking clasps. Stress breaking clasps are going to be a little different. On these two teeth, we're going to be talking about class circumferential clasps with a distal rest and an eye bar with a distal rest. And in those cases, those are anterior teeth, so we're going to be using a cingulum rest or a ball rest. Or we can also use a modified T clasp with a distal rest or a cingulum rest. On the posterior teeth, we'll default back to the normal cast circumferential clasp. Now there are priorities when doing class 4 RPDs and the priority is aesthetics. So we might use some different clasps here to make this case more aesthetic. And we'll leave a link in the description uh, for a video that talks about this. But some of the aesthetic clasps are twin flex clasps or using an embrasure clasp in the posterior and avoiding anterior clasps. Link in the description for a video on that, but for now let's focus on the traditional clasps, which would be an eye bar with a cingulum rest, which means we'll be looking for a 0.01 inch undercut on the distal buckle. And for the back here, we'll be looking for a 0.01 inch undercut on the mesial buckle. And for the major connector, we'll use an AP strap or a horseshoe. If you're using an intraoral scanner for your diagnostic appointment, you could use the free online AI Dental Surveyor and Designer, which would allow you to virtually survey and design your cast. We will leave a link in the description for the software and a video demo. However, if you're doing this the analog way, then follow along this video to learn how to survey using the NAE Surveyor and draw your design on the cast and on paper. We will start by securing the cast onto the table. You also want to make sure that the occlusal plane of the cast is fairly level with the horizon. The first step of surveying is to analyze the cast. This is done using the analyzing rod, which looks like this. We'll go ahead and put that into the mandrel. The goal of analyzing the cast is to identify a path of draw that would require the least amount of adjustment on the guide plane areas. The ideal path of draw would require even adjustments on all abutments, rather than no adjustments on some abutments at the expense of the others. Once we are satisfied with the path of draw, it's time to switch out the analyzing rod for the 0.01 inch undercut gauge. We will now attempt to find those undercuts that we decided we needed in our initial plan. In order to identify the location of an undercut, the undercut gauge needs to contact the tooth at the shank and the disc. The undercut is located at the point of contact of the disc with the tooth surface. To mark that undercut, the cast is pushed away slightly and a pencil mark is made at the contact point of the undercut gauge, marking the undercut location. This process is repeated for all other abutments. Now that we're done identifying all the different undercuts, it's time to draw the survey line. This is done using the lead and the metal sleeve. They're both attached together and then attached to the mandrel. To correctly draw the survey line, we're gonna ensure that only the side of the lead contacts the tooth and not the tip. The side of the lead is rubbed against the highest contour of each tooth and that leaves a line called the survey line. Anything under that line represents a degree of undercut. Notice how I'm using both my hands to undergo this procedure. The left hand is gripping the base of the table and is used to move the cast around. And the right hand is moving the mandrel up and down and around to ensure that only the side of the lead contacts the tooth. With this, the surveying is completed, but in order to save the position of the cast, we need to tripod it. This is done using a 0.03 undercut gauge. The 0.03 undercut gauge is attached to the mandrel and the mandrel is lowered so that it would allow that undercut gauge to touch the cast at three different areas without having to move the mandrel up and down. A red pencil is then used to mark each area of contact with the undercut gauge on the three different points on the cast. And red circles are added for easier visualization. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our design on paper. 
I use the cast to identify which teeth are missing and mark them with a blue line going through the center of the missing teeth. I'll now use a red pencil to draw all the different rest seats on all the abutment teeth. We'll switch over to the blue pencil and we'll draw the rests over the rest seats in blue. We'll also start extending some minor connectors here and here. And we'll start drawing some of the clasps right here. Here are the CC clasps and we'll also extend minor connectors from those. Same thing on the other side. Now let's start getting a little feel for where the eye bars are going to be, skipping one tooth and then going to our insertion here, skipping one tooth and going into our canines. Now that we have most of this figured out, let's finish up the major connector by connecting all the different minor connectors. And let's make this an AP strap by drawing all the individual components of it and connecting the corners. Now let's draw the lattice openings over each tooth right there. And finally, the denture base going from one guide plate to the other. We're almost done with the drawing. The only thing left is to write up some information about each clasp next to its drawing, including the type of major connector, the rests, guide planes, as well as clasps. We can now transition to drawing the same design, but on the cast. We will start by drawing our rest seats in red. The next thing to do is to draw the areas of the guide planes. Red denotes areas included in the mouth preparation. That includes areas like guide planes and undercuts that are going to be added or adjusted on the patient's mouth. Next, we're going to start drawing the framework in blue. We'll go ahead and follow the same steps we did on the paper drawing. Starting with the rest seats here, then going down around the guide planes and starting our minor connectors. We'll start the cat circumferential clasps, remembering that only the tips engage the undercuts. And we'll go around the lingual here, do our reciprocal clasps, and then start our minor connectors coming down the back right there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Cast circumferential clasp with only the tip engaging the undercut, coming around with a reciprocal clasp and the minor connector going down here. Now let's go ahead and connect these minor connectors to get a better feel for the major connector look. Going across here and there, remember to leave adequate space between the teeth and the minor connectors here. And then going across and finally the finish line here. So let's draw a little bit of the lattice going over the crest of the ridge. You might want to draw your eye bars first so that you don't have to erase the insertion later. So going straight down and around here to draw our eye bars. And the same thing on this side, remember we're skipping one tooth, this time anteriorly, like that. Now that we have that figured out, let's finish up the lattice going along the crest here and into the guide planes. Now finally we'll open up the little openings to highlight the little bars of the lattice, trying to stay about where every tooth would be just to give ourselves a little bit more room. And finally, we'll finish this up as an AP strap by drawing the individual lines and outlines and then connecting the corners. And finally, we'll draw the denture base going from one guide plane to the other, going beyond the shoulder of the eye bar and over the frenulum here and back up the other side. And with that, your design and drawing are complete. It's also worth noting that an alternative design is possible with a horseshoe, which would look like that, and that is also acceptable. 
that brings us to the end of the tutorial. We hope it was helpful and we'll see you guys on the next video.